Happy dance. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, we're back. How are you all? How is everyone? Are we back? We are. He's back. <laughs> it's Get episode it back. two. This oh, we're, so we're, funny. we've returned. Not <laughs> yours or mine or Ian's. How is everyone? Good. Very good. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Hello to everyone out Amazing. there. Hello. Hello everyone out there. Say hi in the chat if you're here, if you're joining us, hi if you've been patiently chat. waiting 12 minutes. Oh my goodness for our troubleshooting. But of course, Ooh. I was mucking around with some stuff in the background this week. And uh, hey, speaking of mucking around stuff in the background, have a quick look at the stream. That oh, yeah. Weird. Doesn't That's it? That's not us. It That's changed. not us. You might it need to change that. It was us for a second. Oh, uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Hi, everyone. We're back. Hey. Yes. Ah, hello. You can As you can tell, being our second week, we're learning very much about our technical systems. And this is things that we can talk about as well. Join the conversation. Yeah. How do you stream for your shows? Hmm. Yeah. How do you deal with the stress of things going strange in the technicalities? <laughs> but we are here. We are working. We are solving problems. And anybody who has seen my streams knows that we are miles ahead of the technical gymnastics that I usually manage to perform because we can be heard. Oh, good. We can, right? <laughs> nice. We check that. Post in the chat yeah, if you well... can hear us. Thank you. Thank you, Ashby. Good to see you, my oh. dude. Thanks for tuning in. Thank yeah. You um, thank you for the music. I, I did feel that it gets better. It's really, really good. Um, and we've got lots of other really good stuff. So like when I when we extend the show, do the after, after show chat and stuff, which we'll maybe hang out today. Don't know. We'll, we'll, we always aim for about an hour. So we can shoot from an hour from now if that's good. We'll wrap up at about quarter quarter two. But uh let's let's get into it. I'm I'm excited. Of course I'm excited. Um but yeah, we had some didn't want to go live. I mucking around some stuff, but we're here. What are we talking about this week, guys? What are we what are we keen are we to talk about? about? What are we passionate this about? Week, we had a bit of a chat because we uh we'll be talking at the end of each episode, by the way, we are gonna be talking what's coming up next week so we'll get to that much later on um but we had a look at what we could have a talk about for a second episode after you've now met us and um for everyone out there we just thought of actually what is the way we currently engage people in role-playing games what is uh, what are some of the ways that we go about it so um let's throw it to the three of us here who'd like to kick off just maybe jared because i remember you were talking about mm. uh ways that you've yeah. actually absolutely um it's been it's been a fantastic journey just been having the privilege and the opportunity to uh speak to so many different people about this game and in so many in, in so many different ways just even catching someone who was playing a card game on the regular night that i streamed D, &D at the game store literally this week um shout out mm -hmm. to beckett if you're tuning in my dude um he you know i was talking to him about the the card game because i used to play it um, and he was just like, oh yeah. And like, I got a paid DMing gig and I was like, oh, cool. That's, that's awesome. And he's like, yeah, yeah, it was bizarre. I was meant to be in the city an hour from when I got this call from a guy called Dan and he, he works at a spinal clinic in nearby. And I went, yeah, that was on a Thursday night, wasn't it? You got a, a call like an hour before and, and, and there was a DM who couldn't make it because of a COVID scare. And he was like, yeah, what? And I was like, yeah, that was mm. supposed to be me. <laughs> So there's little things nice. like that where you don't even know. Like I, I, I couldn't have known it was him. He couldn't have known it was supposed to be me. And mm. if things had gone differently, our parts would have diverged. And I was just thinking this evening about how we've all come to know each other. We're, we're from separate, you know, parts of yeah. not the country. We're all from um, Sydney. But, you know, we, we, the opportunity to meet each other has only come through the hobby. So and I think grateful for that. that specifically an aspect of the hobby and, and kind of what I think I was wanting to talk a bit about tonight is sort of ways that we're, we've seen people come into the games because we met at a convention or through a convention. Well, I certainly met the two of you oh, through yeah. a convention, through Collecticon, yeah. um, yeah. which we uh, all sort of started playing, well, running live games at. And I got um, involved in Collecticon through running games at game stores, which weirdly enough is not my normal modus operandi for running games but 
it's and it's it's kind of interesting that that's how I'm meeting more people. I suppose it's not interesting that I'm meeting more people by going out and meeting people face to face. Apparently, according to everyone, that is how you meet people. I don't. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I know, yeah. right? Um, <laughs> but yeah. Think, yeah, it was kind of it was kind of cool meeting you both. Um, I was very intimidated because you seem to have all of your stuff together. See, I didn't swear because I don't think we've put on the adults own feel for this yet. Um, <laughs> your things together. And I was running late um, and going, I hope I've got enough game for this. But uh, yeah. And that was, I think, one of the first or second conventions that I'd been running at was Collecticon. And we are going to talk a bit about that later on tonight, um, was running games at Collecticon. But I think that a lot of people get into um, the tabletop hobbies through either seeing things at conventions or seeing them online or seeing them at game stores. Um, and mm. maybe we could talk a bit about, I guess, our experience of people coming in new to the game through different ways, like at game stores or uh, conventions mm. or, you know, seeing other ways that we do outreach. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. It might be good. Do you want to start with conventions? Because, I mean, that's where we met because then we can oh, branch yeah. out to other ways that people, yeah. sure. mainly because I thought about this, I mean, uh, hopefully, well, reaching out to as many many places in Australia and beyond internationally, if we can, we'd love to hear from you about if mm. you've been to conventions, anyone who's been there or met yeah. um, other gamers at conventions yeah. or even had a chance to play. So we yeah. work uh, at Collecticon, which is based in Western Sydney. We mentioned a bit last week. Um, I remember meeting both of you. I met Jared, of course, at another convention, which is the thing. Mm. We met at um, Crocon in mm -hmm. early 2020 before the COVID happened. Um, so did you we only do the second lucky. one or did we, because there was one in 2019, I think the first one was. I I missed that one. I found out about it. I think okay. I found out about that convention as it was mm. happening. And so I just contacted and said, hey, can I get involved in the next one? Beautiful. And so that's how we met. Mm. And that was the first convention I'd actually run a game at, oh, well, I should say oh. for many Likewise. years, because I think I did one. Yeah. I did one for third edition back in the early 2000s, a long time yeah. ago, but this is like, for this iteration, it was really great to do that. And uh, we had two sessions, so I got to meet two different groups of people. No, no, it was the same group that continued throughout the day. Yeah. Um, had never met any of them. Some had played, some hadn't. Uh, so the funny thing with conventions is it's really great because you probably will meet people who are new to the game. You might have people who have some experience, but it's a real dive in and try it because mm. there's no time. It's like we have like two yeah. hours basically to th throw them into a game. So yeah. it's kind of fun that way, I think. Um, if anyone wants to try it, like the Collecticon coming up on the 12th of March in Penrith, if you're in Western Sydney, um, Come on down, check it out. We do like two hour morning games, two hour afternoon games, and that's it. But it's yeah. what's your experience of like for you guys when you have to try and get people involved who may never have played in a two oh. hour session? Damn, or I mean, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've got I've got the flip I'm side gonna, to that. <laughs> I've got the I've flip got side to that. I've got the dog going off in the background. So. <laughs> Don't worry, <laughs> Jared, take it away. Well, Yada, back, Yada's gonna be, yeah. No, no, I totally, set, I totally set up some kind of like interactive thing and we can make Yada bark and it's totally a soundboard or something. It, that it, would be pretty cool. That would be right, so we good. Can we can do it. <laughs> All right, I've just um, um, stuck Collecticon's website in the chat and for anyone who's interested and look at this on YouTube later on or VODs, it's going to be down below. Yeah. Mm. Um, check it out. Come play. Come meet us. It's going to be awesome. It's always fantastic. Yeah. And uh, we've got sponsors, so uh, there is opportunity mm. to win some sweet, sweet loot. Because you know, mm -hmm. in-game loot's only so satisfying. There's only so much, <laughs> so much goodness it's nice you can to have get. Have the physical click clackies to take with you. Absolutely, but, some um, clickety clackities, some riffly yeah. pages, nice. some, uh, some smelling some... of the book. Wait, that yeah. some of the best nice smells in the world. That's not just you. No, no that's old it. yellow papered <laughs> books. Thank you yeah. very much. Yep, yeah. and uh, fresh playing cards. Yeah. Nice. Um, but Jared, Absolutely. you were telling a story about um, yes. So the, a convention. Yeah. So yeah. Procon, where Ian and I did so fortuitously meet, um, I had run, there was two editions, dates escaped me specifically, but there was one initially, it was, and we both, they were both run at, uh, in Crow's Nest, uh, organized um, 
uh, by someone I met who's hoping to bring it back. Not sure what's happening there, but uh, I was the DM Wrangler and I'd played. And the first one was kind of smallish. It was pretty good. We ran an Epic, which is a multi-table event. So, so many things happened. And luckily I have studied and worked in events. So I was comfortable, but that was one of my first opportunities to really show the community uh, what it is, um, how it should be done, do it well. But playing as a DM, something a bit more relatable. But like, please, if you guys ever feel like you can give back to the community in whatever way, mm. it's it's yeah. important to do so, I think. Yeah. But as you are. Mm. When I was DMing, I had the opportunity to have some players who have been with me since the beginning and familiar with the game, familiar with me and how I run and comfortable with them. So that was nice to have because my first time publicly DMing at a convention, mm. I had a mother and daughter wish I knew their names. It was Jasmine or something. Um, and they were playing for the first time and they both played. Um, and obviously the daughter was, she was maybe 12 or something. And she was quite young, but she had all the enthusiasm. She had more confidence and everything than anyone else at the table. And a couple of other people who I can't remember who were familiar or not, but we ran this epic. And as you, it was the, it was an invasion from pirates and they were looking for a certain person in this township, in this, in this docks side city. And you could choose different, uh, encounters that you wanted to interact with. And it was combat, social or exploration, uh, as the pillars would be. And cool. you could choose a few different ones. And then that meant that your group could only access certain clues or certain information. And then you would have to share this with other tables as they completed sections of the adventure. And I just distinctly remember this uh, encounter. They wanted to fight the pirate champion, who was a minotaur. I can't remember what level they were, but it was going to be a I'm challenging encounter. I was about to ask encounter. what level were they. <laughs> I can't remember, Low, but it was going to be a challenging imagine. encounter. Mm. And they could do other things like go and ask where this guy is oh. and man the cannons on the barracks. But no, they wanted to do this. And so combat broke out, swords flew things happened and then there's opportunities as a dungeon master or a game master when you you metagame you fudge dice you do interesting things for the sake of the story and for the yeah. sake of the rule of cool we'll get into that sometime yeah. but this was an opportunity that i witnessed obviously i had let's call her jasmine with her mom first time ever playing dnd they had this amazing experience everybody got to know each other and by the end of the day when this pirate champion encounter had to happen she had to be the last one to hit this and to finish the encounter and to be the hero of the table of everything uh and that's what i did i gave that creature one more hit worth of hit points until it came around to her <laughs> yeah. turn so if you're watching if by any stretch of a chance um i did that so you're welcome because the second time we ran maybe two years later by pure chance, I was running a table again and randomly her and her mother signed up for my adventure. They didn't know hey. that it was going to be me running. And I had the privilege and the honor to have seen these people come back. And of course, Jasmine had all these dice and she was ready and it was, you know, she'd obviously been playing. So that's what you get to witness when you stay in this hobby long enough. That's the moral of my yeah. little story there mm. is you get to that's do really amazing lovely cool magic things as a DM, you get to tell stories and manipulate things in such clever ways when you get to that stage. And also we've known different people for so long at different times and we come together, we meet at conventions live, but we're so connected now and so global. So, you know, reach yeah. out, be involved. That's my, I think, that's my story. I think actually that story brings up a really, really interesting point about like the differences between where you're running games and the kind of groups that you're running them for. Like mm -hmm. for me, and this could just be, you know, world according to OMGM, I like at a convention or when you're sort of in a more public area, that's to me is more of almost like a show game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where the, mm -hmm. the goal is, and I think I read it on TikTok or so well, I didn't read it. I saw it on TikTok um, mm -hmm. or somewhere online about a kid dm that said i don't keep track of deep pit points i keep playing until it's the encounter's no more fun and i think when you've got that really short condensed kind of environment of a convention where you have to finish in a certain time i feel like that is more like it's it's important to have the fun and for everyone to feel they accomplished something yeah. whereas sometimes oh, i wonder yeah i wonder sometimes in the like in game stores where you've got people that are a little more 
Um, as someone who sees rules as guidelines, I'm trying to come up with a way of saying people that really like to play via rules and mm -hmm. like to structure. Sort of work to that. Yeah, like that structure and don't Common like the ground. ambiguity that, yeah. And um, for those who are, sorry, uh, just, yeah, I've, I've definitely ran for random game days at game stores mm -hmm. and you, you deal with people like that who, uh, yeah. that, that yeah. they need it to be that way because that's how they understand yeah. it. Yeah. And anything yeah. that diverges from that isn't necessarily yeah. comfortable. So yeah, yeah. Exa exactly as, yeah. You, as, you, as you were saying. And then I think that's, and there's, you know, some of the games that we've played, which are more the actual show games, which are like performance games, things that mm. I think are more, when you're oh, starting yeah. to think about people that, you know, live plays, the good live plays, they're not just playing, they're usually performing as well, yeah. Um, yeah. which is a different oh, yeah. way. And then, you know, playing online. <laughs> Um, mm. again, that's a, I think, I don't want to say there's different rules. I want to say there's like, it's a different environment and that change, at least yeah. for me, that changes what I think is important as a DM. Mm. Um, yeah. It changes priorities. Sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like your methodology and your approach. And we absolutely yeah. wanted to talk about this is yeah. how do we favorite, like what approach do we take? And, and I think that's mm. again, a huge thing. Like we really want to help like guide dms and gms into the into the hobby and new players and stuff we'll get into that at some stage but just talking on that for a second it's definitely you approach different systems in different ways too right um and you absolutely need to yeah. have tactfulness about how you approach a group and like i've I said yeah. and i'll keep saying you can play completely different games with the same gm the same players but have completely yeah. different experiences same system and have completely different experiences yeah because it's it's your approach yeah. because if you play online yeah. yeah there's going to be certain things like music's easier to listen to online than it is yeah. live yep. how do you get that balance yeah. between enjoying it and being able to hear each other yeah. whereas everybody can do their that, own thing yeah. yeah it's that digital environment as well it's like we're used to computer games so you're expecting atmosphere you're expecting that audio the audio element <laughs> is so much more important i think mm -hmm. online it's so yeah. much more important. You don't yeah. need to see people necessarily online as yeah. well. Changes. Yeah. I grew up tabletop role playing. And so because yeah. of that, I love the table experience and being able to re read the room that way. Yeah. And so it's so much, and it's a performative aspect yeah. like you were talking about, but it's, it's a, a live 3D performative aspect. Mm -hmm. Online's a whole different experience. It really mm -hmm. does rely on that audio thing. And mm. that engagement via screen is limited. You can't play too long with that. It's mm. too exhausting. Everyone finds that, I think. Mm. At the same time, visuals, you need to have an image to represent things at times. Yeah. Um, mm. You can do yeah. combat on a battle map for extended periods because mm. people can then go, good, then I'm based there. And now I know, yeah. okay, can I go here? And it's very clear in that way. But mm. at the mm. same time, the thing that I find I would prefer to introduce people tabletop than online mm. because you can use the theatre of the mind and they can mm. imagine things. You do it on screen, it's great, but it's explicit. That's what it looks mm. like. You can't imagine it so much and you you yep. do need to describe a bit more in a way to give flavour yeah. to it so that it doesn't so they can use their imagination, I feel. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think that's actually really interesting because I've, I've, I'll be honest, I play a lot online. Um, I prefer playing online. It's, um, it's not that I don't like people. I just like to be several kilometers from them most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, it's interesting that you talk about the kind of being more constrained in using theatre of the mind because I've come across quite a, a really wide variety um, of people who run games online. And there are those that only run um, via just by voice. They don't even use um, video. When I'm running, I prefer to put at least myself on video. And that is either my latent narcissism or I just feel it gives something for people to look at, you know, to kind of yep. convey the characters a little yep. bit more. Um, and I also like to use a lot of battle maps, but I also like using battle maps when I'm playing uh, live, you know, yep. within that several kilometre radius. Um, yes, Purdy, I do play online. Shocking, I know. <laughs> um, you should try it sometime. Um, and I've heard you can, like, make things sometimes in tabletop. You should try that too. Sorry, Purdy is a um, most excellent game master. Um, who I met online. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. There you go. But yeah, so I find in the online environment, um, I think it gives people an error, an element of safety. And I think you get people involved yeah. in the game who wouldn't come out and wouldn't play face to face, who aren't comfortable that way. I don't know, vice versa. I've had people from games that I've run face to face when we had to go online for COVID. They, they weren't comfortable with the technology. They weren't comfortable mm. with, you know, having to put everything online. Um, I do find, and I'm not sure whether this is the fact that I'm the sort of human being that has 18,000 tabs open on my browser at once. On, when you're playing an online game, there are so many avenues for players to contact you quietly. And yeah. I've had, um, so I, the way I run online is I will use a virtual tabletop. Um, uh, they don't sponsor me, but I use Roll20 because it's easy for me. I know it might not be the yeah. best, but it's what I use. Um, I'll talk, yeah, I'll talk about the not yeah. easy way in a minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and I use Discord for video chat. Um, yeah. And... I forgot where I was going with that. What was my sentence just before? Quick, mind, mind. Thousand things open at once. And I will Discord, have people yeah. messaging me, messaging me on the Roll20 whisper function. I will have people sending yeah. me uh, messages in group chat on one channel in Discord, private me chat mm. messages in Discord. And um, I think, like, I enjoy that trying to jump around and keep everything up because one of yeah. the things that I really enjoy as a DM is feeling like I'm juggling a whole bunch of different balls and they're all staying up in the air and I'm not losing track. And then I get to the yep. end of the game and I'm exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's part of the the kind of the adrenaline and the thrill for me. But yeah. that can be interesting. People will be sending you things and the chance of missing them is high. And I know I've missed stuff in games. Um, so I think that's that's an interesting one as well. And the it's, it's I think it's a slightly different but no less intimate and no less real relationship you have with players and people that you know, you know from online. Um, I'm so that, glad you brought that up about online yeah. and your love of it, which is not yeah. the same experience I've had, but I'm yeah. so glad to hear that because I'm less tech savvy in that sense. And I don't have that so many in the last 20 years, people mm. playing are online and it's like, yeah. I came to it late. And so I'm learning yeah. about that, but it's some people's natural habitat. And so it's so mm. much more enjoyable to play this so that we can see people here. I love the games that we play yeah. online. Mm. I have a natural bias to the tabletop but it doesn't yeah. mean I don't enjoy this. And I think that's great to know. Yeah. Like you said, there are different avenues that people feel mm. more comfortable to engage in yeah. role-playing games. Yeah. Yeah, and I absolutely. Think COVID was, sorry. COVID was You're really right. interesting because it pushed mm. a lot of people into that online forum. You know, we couldn't get out. Mm. It normalised it a lot. And I kind of wonder whether now, because we are so much more used to interacting online, like look at us, we're not sitting at one table, we're sitting around with our various backgrounds um, mm. in our triangle around Sydney, the, the Bermuda Botany Triangle, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, yes. But it's, mm. I think it normalised it and I think that made online play more accessible for people. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's, almost out mm. of necessity in a way. Yeah. Um, but my online running yeah. journey started way back very early roll 20 mm. it was just like yeah. the middle of the literally on a wednesday at 12 o'clock in the middle of the day because roll yep. 20 had a search for game function i was like i don't work yep. that day when i was yeah. getting into it i was playing with people from the states which you can absolutely yeah. do you can pick up games mm -hmm. anywhere anytime there are absolutely opportunities out there but at the same yeah. time if you were going to go that route and you want to dm i warn you <laughs> We've got obviously a couple of different experiences from from both of you, Thea. You've delved into it to the point where you're like, this is the tool that serves me how I want to use it. And it gives me options for whispers and all these other features that Roll20 has. Yeah. Serves yeah. as virtual tabletop and you can do a lot. Uh, Ian, Albert Rodeo, would that be your go-to? I think you shared something about that. But no, you use Roll20 Albert as Rodeo. well. Somebody yeah. talked about Albert. Sure about if anybody wants to just like just go to a website and have something that you can just send invites to, there's a couple of different options. Albert Rodeo is the only one that comes to mind. And you can draw stuff mm. and you can get you can get going and that's the main thing. If you want to oh, dive yeah. into the deep end, I can tell you all about Forge and Foundry Virtual Tabletop. So Foundry Virtual yeah. Tabletop is like this open mm. software that people can mod. So the community mm. who can code and things have added these features. So at its core, it's like Roll20. But then there's certain things that Roll20 has that the community had to make. And so there's all of that. Mm. And there was a point where before Wizards officially acquired d, &D Beyond, you could mm. use this tool to export entire modules and maps into this virtual tabletop. So if I owned it on d, &D Beyond, 
I had the, the access to the pages and it would run on your screen and it would literally run it a script and pull it off your screen. So I don't know how dodgy that is because then you technically own an entire copy of it digitally somewhere else. But mm. obviously when Wizards acquired them, when Wizards of the Coast yeah. acquired D&D Beyond, everybody was like, nope, not happening anymore, which is fine. Mm. And it should be that way. Mm -hmm. But that was my original appeal of going over there. And because you can go down this rabbit hole of thousands of add-ons, I think I run a hundred different add-ons. And it's as mm. simple as I would like to have a, a different playlist thing, or I want to have a rain visual effect, or I want to change the lighting, or I want my spells to be animated when somebody pushes a button, it automatically rolls. And because you have a target feature, mm -hmm. you can cast an animated fireball at them. Yeah. That's the next level stuff. And you can move your characters around with the arrow keys. And then when you yeah. run into a tile that the dungeon master set up, there's a teleport mm -hmm. function that takes you into a new map that is the inside of that That's building you just walked into. That's so cool. So yes, yeah. as you were saying, yeah. Ian, it's like a video game because you can, <laughs> and then you can automate, you can have an NPC token that they can interact with and go, hi, I would like to do something. So that could open mm. up an inventory for you to mm. buy things from a shopkeeper, or it could be an interactive thing where you're getting plot information. You can do all of this ahead of time, but there's going to be a point where you lose your tactfulness and your approach and you can't read your audience and things are going to happen that you don't want to. And there's too much agency and too much freedom. There's a delicate balance in the conversation of role playing. So go that way if you want to spend hundreds of hours prepping. <laughs> Literally you know hundreds really of hours prepping. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. One, I don't have the patience. I don't have the 100 hours patience. <laughs> I don't I have 10 minutes, but I don't have patience to wait for you to finish your sentence because I'm too excited to say something. Good. <laughs> Good. Um, but what was really interesting when you were saying that and you were sort of saying how you could automate so much, there was a point where I got an uncomfortable feeling. I was like, no, I wouldn't want to do that. I don't want. Yeah. to have so much taken away from my ability to run the game. I want it as a tool, not like AI is a tool, right? I want um, I want the maps. I would love to have animated spells, but again, patience, mm. setting things up. Um, but having an NPC that could click on, I'm not a huge fan of. Like mm. I, I, I grudgingly allow my players to move their own tokens and then watch wide-eyed as they go where they're not supposed to go. But... <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, and I think you're right. It's, it's great to have that level of control, and I, but I think, and I, maybe Ian or Jared, you brought it up earlier. There's a line between where players are expecting, have a video game expectation and when they're expecting a role yeah. playing. Um, and yeah, and it's actually, Purdy makes an interesting point, which kind of goes to what I was about to say. Finding online playing was more engaging and that you had to mm -hmm. pay attention, um, and yeah, that's that's interesting because I wonder, I wonder as we go forward, we get a lot more people who are used to playing video games, and video games now are incredible. You get things like you know Dark Souls mm. and Dead Space and all this sort of stuff where it is so engaging. Mm. You can get VR mods and everything's interactive and it's completely open world. TTRPGs aren't like that, but the same with the whole you know everybody expected it all DMs to be a voice actor after a little while. I wonder mm. where the expectations will be. Like I haven't encountered that. My players, um, even mm. my players that have come from a background of video games, um, mm. their their expectation for a role playing game is still different. And I think that's that's like a key thing about role play mm. is it's the role play part of it. Is you can have you know RPGs online, but it's not the same as having a real human being who's responding mm -mm. to you, interacting. No, with that's you. part of the magic, and like that's how I. Yeah describe dnd and role-playing games to muggles because <laughs> we understand what that means for the non-initiated <laughs> and those who aren't fully aware of what it is like i've said it's a conversational storytelling experience or a cooperative storytelling collaborative game mm. and mm. it is and it is a conversation game and all the rules are how to resolve the whole i did this no you didn't yes i did the rules say that did or did not happen and yeah. then it's a common language um yeah. I can't remember where I was going with this. Uh, since I was, around, yeah, no, I was just um, replying to Purdy in chat. Yeah. Um, mm. Exactly that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Different folks, different strokes, etc. But yeah. I like to play online because, just like you were saying, part of the thrill of uh, the manicness that is running a game sometimes is it keeps me fully occupied. I'm fully engaged, and I'm in flow, and it's 
it's where I like to be. That's why it's so much fun. But yeah. when I play, I need an engaging game, an engaging DM. I very mm. quickly get distracted. So I hate to admit it, but when I play, I need something else to do. I need maybe a fidget thing or a, 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 a video game of some kind that's not yeah. that taxing. And when I play yeah. online, when I'm comfortable in my, in my home, in my studio with my computer, like I am now, my hands are up here. I'm not playing in here. <laughs> um, I'm absolutely, <laughs> I'm absolutely going to be doing something else. Um, you know, I'm not a note writer or, or a drawer or something like that. I need two tracks and like, I love to have music on and I'll play my own thing. And I just need yeah. something else to interact with. And yeah. because I GM, because I play so much, I feel like I can flip in and quickly engage yeah. and I do pay attention. That's the main thing is yeah. be respectful yeah. that again, mm. if that works for you, if you need that, mm. make sure that you are still engaged and cooperating because if you're lagging or people need to repeat themselves, yeah you're not you're not really contributing anything so please yeah it's if everybody just pays attention contributes stays up to date with what's happening and try not to have too much table talk that's another thing that doesn't happen when it's live everybody can't chat to each other you guys can't do something while i'm doing you know split the party situation so there's pros and cons it's different there's pros and cons (laughs) yeah well i think it's um Sorry, I don't know if I was going to jump in and say something you were going to say in, but um, one of the things Purdy brought up in chat as well was when you have your people in person not paying attention. I've had, um, and I know the, exactly. you guys have as well, I've had autistic people play. I've had people mm. who are of different elements of neurodivergence who actually mm. will sit there with a book in the middle of the game, um, mm-hmm. which yep. can be off-putting when you first start off. Um, I was mm. lucky that the, this is when I was running at a game store. But the, this particular person's um, mother came up to me and said, you know, it's been really hard to find a game for him. Uh, he gets really mm. People think he's disengaged, but he's not. And he was a great player, you know. Yeah. Um, you never but know. he had to sit there with a book. Um, so mm. I think it's, whereas online, um, you may not be distracted by that. Like if you have to feel that you're, um, like if it's helpful for you to see people looking at you and interacting and it's distracting mm. if they're not, sometimes online can be good. But yeah. Ian, I know you sort of played with different groups of people as well. What's is what have you had experience like that? Thanks. Yeah, I actually was thinking all about this when you were talking about uh, neurodivergent people um, for for different different ways of engagement. And yeah, I saw Purdy what you'd written on there as well. Thank you, pl- thank you so much for writing that. There's so much. There's such a different engagement from what we've talked about when you're online. And from the experiences I've had, I've um, the last few years I've been running a number of games to introduce um, teenagers to uh, role-playing games through mm. Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition. Um, and originally it was all tabletop, and this was through um, really great partnership with Penrith Library. Um, ran that for a few years, then the COVID hit, and we shifted online, and they we tried it on there, and I found interestingly. I've started to see the very big difference between running a game with people in person compared mm-hmm. to running a game online and having to adapt to that. Um, in person, um, because probably I've had I had had much more experience, I will quickly say that Roll20, mm-hmm. I started playing actually in 2013. So I've actually been online yeah. with that because with friends who we couldn't catch up with, many of whom have families and jobs and everything. Um, that was the only way we could catch up once a week and we were on Roll20. So I've logged thousands of hours on it. And so it's like, mm. but I've only seen in the last few years other things like Foundry and Albert are coming into it and all these new um, systems that are coming online, which is needed. I'm so glad. Yeah. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. We had a very limited kind of engagement and not many people were doing that at the time that I knew, but anyway, that's another story. Mainly my experience was tabletop and running with different groups you over time if you're with the same group of people you can pick up individual quirks individual engagement styles um, people who aren't necessarily looking like they're paying attention but you know that they just need their space until their moment comes up and I think that's that social thing it's a really Mm. good thing I think um, don't be dissuaded by it if it happens Mm. in your group Uh, particularly I think it's a lot more of a challenge as well for younger um, groups of people because they're starting mm. to engage in the world and it's more difficult. They don't have as many tools to mm. engage and say, hi, guys, I just need some quiet time or even not even say mm. it, that you just need to pick up on things. Yeah. So for me, 
a number of the groups that I had, I've had kids with ADHD and kids with um, or diagnosed as such. Um, kids who, um, one girl who wears um, noise cancelling uh, earphones throughout the entire time. And I'd be like, hi, ready for you? And she's like, yep, okay, I do this. And she's right into there and she's fully paying attention, just yeah. can't be looking at you. She'll be doing other things. Yeah. Mm. Something I do at my table, we can talk about safety tools at another time, but basically is also I, I, I don't allow phones at the table for my games. It's just like, sorry, guys, it's not the way I go about it as a tabletop mm -hmm. thing. I don't have to. I don't have them unless it's an ongoing group that we've all agreed that's what we want to do. So mm -hmm. one ongoing group, they're fully on their iPad so that they can have d and Beyond so they can have that was my question. On there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. possible. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a strange thing, but I, yeah, yeah. again, uh, last week we talked about session zero. We will continue to add into what makes an efficient, productive session zero. Uh, and that is absolutely something that needs, it's just a bunch of questions. A session zero is just yeah. a bunch of questions, questions that mm. need answers. And one, of, and they're not all going to suit your games and you'll need things that I've never heard of, but whatever the, the whole point of, session zero is to establish exactly that is what is behavior that's okay at the table what devices tools etc and then if if you're going to allow tablets phones laptops because mm. i have it all at my live game i use a tablet yep. it's quick efficient and it's how i like to run and if i had to i could run everything from my phone it's a claim i've made and i'm yet to pull it off um yep. but i run everything <laughs> from a tablet and i don't need the box because i have dnd beyond and it's so efficient and it's so clean, but I have minis. So I do bring a go bag. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you have to just discuss that because mm. yeah, people can quickly tab out and do other things. And I would be guilty of doing that if I was, because I have a, I've got a giant tablet screen in front of me. Why would I not be doing something? Come on, be um, honest. If you're not, you've got something else open. You've got three tabs open right now. <laughs> I have this is the, the nature NVIDIA of drivers. this though, isn't it? I have the NVIDIA <laughs> drivers the I was trying to install and then I had here. to check. I had to check roll 20 because I had to, I had to, <laughs> had to, I'd be like, Hey, and how, how long you been? So yeah. I've been, I've been, uh, I've been, how many hours have you been playing? Really? Yeah. This is 1,027. <laughs> um, so kudos to you. But I mean, that's in one platform. This is exactly it, right? This is in one platform that I use for so long and that's prep time. Yeah. That's times I've left my computer open and, and stuff, but obviously I have dozens of games and you just accrue yeah. this over time. Um, but yeah, 2014. Yeah. So you beat me to the punch. <laughs> all right. All right. Now I'm going to check mine. Not that it's a competition. Oh, no, I do. Well, no, no, no. All, all you're doing that, we'll talk about something slightly different because this is actually, whether it's online or tabletop, there's something about if you have a session zero and you have a group that you're going with for a while, you can establish those norms and you can establish yeah. this is how we work and et cetera. I'm going to mm -hmm. jump back quickly to mm -hmm. uh, a convention. It is yeah. very difficult when you have yeah. a one-off, when you have that thing where you're introducing people to the game. Um, mm. Here's just some things about that I've found that it's great because you can get people who've never played it and just go, I just want to dabble, see what it's like. Mm. It's only two hours of my time. I want to give it a go and see what it's like. And that's great. How do you simplify and streamline so it's easy to engage, especially like mm. I love what you said, Jared. I don't know if you said it last week, but we've talked about this. You can have a role-playing game where you literally have two stats and that's it. And that's like, you're either primalistic like an animal or you're sophisticated <laughs> like, a, like a person. Yeah. Which one are you hedging towards? And that's exactly. it. That's basically when it's, you do this action, you do that. It's yeah, so yeah. great. So I'll yeah. have to talk about, and I'll, and I'll, yeah, no, we're absolutely going to, I've just realized we're not going to know when we, we're talking about things and we're going to, Circle <laughs> back, but obviously those things I'm are writing stuff down that's anyway, going to happen. But um, yeah, you found well, a note taker in this group. I um, yeah. in 2019, just before um, lockdown and everything and COVID, but uh, there was an opportunity because I've been in, in connected into the community. Somebody posted on uh, DD New South Wales, the Facebook group. Go check it out; it's awesome, it's fantastic, and that's where we hang out. Um, and you will meet people and players and games. Uh, but somebody opportunistically opportun opportunity opportunity came up where somebody was looking for just people who were like gms or, or players who could dress up in costume and kind of like a mingle in character at a, at a corporate christmas party and so somebody tagged me in it and i reached out 
and they said, oh, look, this is what we were trying to do. And I said, look, I have an events background. I also know people who are actors, who are reenactors, who give tours on the Sydney tall ships, long ships. James, I know you're watching. Um, and he's a fantastic human being who wanted to do this with me so badly that we spent many, many long nights and crazy adventures organizing, costuming ourselves fully with prosthetics, contact lenses, and all of this stuff. And I was the guild master. And we had three other actors playing different characters. We had a barbarian who was showing off weapons. We had a thief who had like some shackles and lockpicking in a handkerchief game. And James was the bard. So he played as an elf and he was the MC for the night. And so we had over 200 people on this rooftop in Pitt Street. It's a gorgeous restaurant. And I had a little turret, the sandstone turret. And that's where I was. And I was set up with all my, with these minis and these, dra and these dragons. And I was in my garb. You can uh, check it out on the GM Chef socials. You'll see me in costume uh, in exactly that. So everybody, when they arrived, either was in costume or they weren't going to be in costume because they had other Christmas parties to go to. And as they did, they got a welcome bag. They signed in and they got a little, uh, a little adventuring kit. It had a name tag, one of three guilds. It had three stats on it, mind, body, strength. And randomly you had one, two or three. And in your little bag, you had an eraser and a pencil, a custom D20 uh, for the company. You had a Barocca, your health potion, uh, your recovery for the night. And that was pretty much it. And then maybe some sweets and stuff, I can't remember. But it meant that when people eventually found their way to my turret, they could come in and obviously they were with little groups of friends and they'd come in and they'd be like, What's, what is this? And I says, welcome to Dungeons and Dragons. I am your guild master and we will tell a tale of your mighty guild. From which guild do you hail? And they are so confused. And, they, and I'm like, your name tag? Are you not assigned a guild? And they look down, the guild of shadows, guild of steel, etc. And that was the rogue, right. the barbarian and the yeah. bard. And so they could interact mm -hmm. with their guild leaders at this event where they had all come together collaboratively because it was an IT company. And this IT company, mm -hmm. of course, I themed all of my little quick adventures as the Great Firewall, the Great Worm and <laughs> such. <laughs> so these people come in and I introduce dozens of people to a broken down, tiny 1D and D, 1D20 version of D&D &D with three stats. I introduced dozens of people to this in an evening. So they would wander in with their little group of people and they go, what is this? And I say, oh, you're from the Guild of Swords, a mighty warrior. What do you wield? Scabbard. So you've lost your sword. Yeah. Great. You have a scabbard. Ah, from the Guild of Shadows. You wield magic? Sure. And I just, they just started building with me. And I said, you stand at the base of a tower. The, the, the door ripped off its hinges. And so we played D&D &D for 10 minutes. And as the mm. evening got on, people got drunker and it got more fun. Yeah. Um, and I'll yeah. save a really Inhibition excellent story. Yeah. I'll save the magic of the night for another time because I'm, it's a long mm. story. But that's how mm. you introduce a lot of people to TNT really fast. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Not, not, keep, yeah. Not, get, really... not get them drunk. Yeah. Um, a, like, <laughs> it was an incredible <laughs> evening and it, it was unforgettable. But um, yeah, like you can, you can break it down real, real simple. Um, that even drunk people won't understand. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. But that's like yeah. that sort of thing of, of simplifying the rules to make yeah. it just simply, it's more Take of what you it's need. the storytelling. Mm -hmm. And it's about the storytelling and that as long as you, and it's like you said, you just keep making people feel comfortable and it's, it's sorry, it's a very, very theatrical, yes, and, oh, well, you've come mm -hmm. up with this, of course. Mm -hmm. And so you can mm -hmm. add to that. And mm -hmm. that kind of way to make people feel that their decision is valuable is really important it doesn't matter mm -hmm. where it is even if it makes no sense it's like okay that's yeah. what happens How because happen? we can yeah. do that it's like, <laughs> yeah because we can which is fantastic mm. and even like it doesn't matter if it's online or, or a tabletop you can do that um we've had a look at this i remember thea and i had a look at this as well uh this is something yeah. about how do you simplify a bnd because dungeons and dragons yeah. is not simply two attributes or three it is yeah. a bit of a system of rules and how do you introduce that mm -hmm. so we came up with this kind of dl size envelope size character sheet with a big picture of their character and the simplified as best as possible for one mm -hmm. session scenario which is the stuff i use at collecticon and other ones to say we don't need a rule book you have everything on that mm -hmm. sheet right in front of you 
doesn't make yeah. any sense. That's okay. We'll work it out as we play. And it's like, mm. I need everyone to have a look at their strength on there as well at this point, because you're going to try and push this boulder together or whatever, or whatever you chose yeah. to do. And you can do this ability that has got check boxes on it. You can only do it three, there's three boxes. You can do it three times in this adventure today. Oh, you can only do it once. And it's like, oh, okay. When do you do it? I'm so, fourth edition. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and it's actually, it's so, it was funny because I think that may have influenced it. It's literally that idea of we have only so much time. You can mm. do some things all the time. You can do some things short. And so it puts a bit of, you know, like, well, and there's only so much time. You can't explain. Yeah. Yeah. All the you can't. Ref the refined stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's such a good point. I think when you've got like conventions um, is bringing people in, is having a simple way to get them in. Like I know one of the things that I've done for CollectorCon is I'll put the backstory. I'll have three gen characters and I'll have the backstory of those characters in like a little paragraph and people go, hi, pick your character. These are the stories that you can tell. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's, yeah. So I think that's being able to simplify D&D, but not just D&D because yeah. there's a couple of, there's um, there's a few TTRPGs mm -hmm. out there that are really simple. I know we talk about D&D a lot because I know three of us play it a lot, but mm -hmm. one of my favorite games is lasers and feelings it is a one page ttrpg you've got um you have one number that is it you have a single stat that says whether you are a la more lasers or more feelings so more sciencey or more feelingsy and i've run that with people online it is so much fun absolutely so much fun and that's a simple way to get people into it and you can get some amazing role play in it um so, yeah, I think it doesn't have to be a complex game like D&D. &D. Like, what do you guys think of using some of, of like, as I said, we do a lot of D&D because &D I, I think yeah. the role play world does, the tabletop world does a lot well, of D&D. &D. Yeah. But yeah. other systems that are simpler for getting people in, like, and oh, sure. I know we've never, we've never done it at a con. Maybe that's something to, I don't know. Is that something to think about? Is that something that would get people in? I mean, absolutely. Like, I'd I love to. I, yeah. I, like i mean yeah it's it's obviously the one that's out there on popular culture it's out there mm. in terms of like you go into zing or eb games even and that's what you're going yeah. to see branded that's what you're going yeah. to see merchandised and yeah. that's a whole conversation mm. for another time especially with all the turbulence that happened in january yeah. um yeah. but yeah. you know you're not yeah you're never gonna like, i hate to say never but like you're never gonna go to a game store I say that there was an Xbox 360 <laughs> shadow run video game, but you know what I mean? Like oh. there's D&D video games. Yeah. There's, there's D, &D there's literally a D, D movie coming out in a matter of yeah. weeks. Like yeah, in March. it's, yeah. it is a brand, not a game, yeah. right? It's mm. not just, it is not, it, sorry. It is not role-playing games and it is not the role-playing game and it isn't yeah. the be all and end all by any stretch. And it is, no easy enough to get into with fifth edition mm. Mm. yeah but you have options and play the system that suits what you want to achieve um as we've obviously mostly been talking about online play tonight which has mm. been fantastic to dive into yeah. from so many aspects um mm. i like running i have not run alien role play game yeah. live mm. yet because in the the actual person at free league who developed it has been interacting with the foundry community uh, uh forge what is it foundry vtt and he built yeah. the interactive the, the 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 import and he wrote it and he troubleshooted it and he helped bring that to virtual tabletop and bless you mm. i wish i had his name um and then the community created like a little radar app so it does a little ping oh the yeah, yeah, the motion, right, the that motion is so detector. Cool, the motion tracker. So, so they did a little motion track. Tiny little, this is what I'm talking about. Tiny little mod, you pop it in. That's the only thing I changed. And when I streamed it, we did it with a Discord reactive, kind of like VR, um, VTubing kind of a thing. So when we were talking, we were just an avatar that would light up and then we would disappear. And mine would go dark. And then when I popped up, it said, it said Waylon Yanti. Anyway. Um, so you can see how with a few key things that's such a, a much more immersive experience there's also a guy mm. on youtube who i got permission from to use his own original soundtrack for alien and they're gorgeous you have everything from weird eerie computer glitchy soft ambience to epic cinematic mm. thrilling stuff and 
I would click around the playlist as the mood changed. And then I also gave one player access to that scanning thing. Ah, one player. That's fair. <laughs> because that's the person who had the scanner. So there's certain things that you can do when you engineer it and you want to dive into that. And that's been fun for me. You know, mm -hmm. that's my creative thing. That's what I spend time doing. And again, as you were talking in maps, I love creating maps with dungeon draft. It's yeah. fantastic. You can get so many beautiful artist contributions and on Patreon, you can support them and they, you know, create all of these um, assets for you to make your own maps. And I lose myself mm -hmm. and I put on a good playlist. Yeah. I lose myself in that. And then I just look back and I go, cool, that's ready for a session. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But yeah. now I've been more yeah. plot oriented and engaging, mm -hmm. you know, because I've been playing live recently. So completely different modalities, completely different. So full circle to back where we started. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to. I love that as well because I love making maps too. And we can talk about that on yeah. another day about the tools that you prepare. It links to what Purdy was saying before. I think it was Purdy or someone else. I'm sorry if I got the name who actually posted this. How much time, how how long do you take to prepare? I think that's a whole mm. chat. That's a conversation that we'll have yeah. to do because that's how long is a piece of string? Um, but mm. I think, mm. yeah, we should talk about that down the line, I reckon, because that's, yeah, it really um, depends. I'll just, doing it for? yeah, I'll yeah. just dive into it and I'll, I have to just say a quick disclaimer. Um, yeah. obviously the world of creativity has been shaken by the sudden popularity of AI stuff. We have to, I think we just have to actually mm. talk about it not just go. Wait, yeah. wait. So I'm just going to quickly dive into it because I had an incredibly eye opening <laughs> week. Uh, mm -hmm. shout out to DM Dave on, uh, Instagram. I've been following him and his investigation into the whole OGL recently. He's been hiring lawyers and really looking into it because he has lots of followers and it's, it is his mm -hmm. job, um, that was, you know, at, at stake during yeah. that whole month. So thank you for that. And he's taking a break from social media. So, um, I hope to meet you someday. Mm -hmm. He was, uh, saying that, what was I, damn, what was I talking about? AI. Uh, AI. AI. He was, he recently apologized and said, look, I was using it for like people to use as a model to draw stuff and to like draw poses and like, you know, using it as a tool that's not necessarily detrimental or taking away. But then somebody who's published an entire book that they've yeah. taken photos of artists, uh, models and poses, you're not going to buy their yeah. book now. So I had this eye opening moment because I prepped my pretty much my entire session that I ran live this week with chat GTP. Hmm. from asking it to give me ideas to creatures to puzzles to magic items and then i filled the gaps and i stitched it all together and by god was it fantastic and i told my players after the fact i'm not I'm not going to hide that from them <laughs> and even this art behind me is something i've created and you yeah. know i don't i don't I actually after this week after realizing the power of this stuff and its potential trajectory it is frightening and I'm going to change this background because I, I, I've di I've dived into it. I've done a lot of the AI art stuff and I enjoy it as a hobby, but by no means do I want to profit from this. I don't think it's okay. I know so many artists Yeah, and, well, I, yeah. and I've finally yeah. found my stance on it. Yeah. I think that's really interesting because I've got a whole, and we won't, I think we're going to talk about AI at some point as a whole. Yeah. Separate. Let's not die. And creativity and ownership. Ownership yeah. and creativity yeah. is a thing. Exactly. And intellectual property and that kind of thing. AI, but, um, but yeah, I think that is, I think you can get to an ethical place and still use AI, but mm. um, yeah, we could yeah. have spent a long time talking about it. Yeah. Funny enough though, heard you was just come yeah. up with DMGPT. Do we oh yeah. No, I know. So that okay. So I've, I'll just dive into it. I was mucking around with it for other things, and you can literally ask it anything. I was like, "Hey, create me a, a meal plan for the week with a protein and v various vegetables mixed in, um, yada yada." And it just, just, it just does it. Like it's, it's crazy. Well, we were and, talking about having yeah. an AI as a DM. Well, us. I did that. Yeah, I said I, I, yeah. I kind of ran out of ideas, <laughs> and I said, "Start a D and D session with me." And it was like, "Okay, yeah. let me know some more about the adventure." It in session zeroed me, bro. It goes, tell me, okay, <laughs> let's discuss the characters wow. you want to play. Yeah. Let's discuss the difficulty. Let's discuss the setting and tone. Tell me more about the adventure so that we can create wow. something like, like I'm obviously. So I understood what session zero was straight away from you saying. I, like prompt it. I just, yeah. I just said, start a D and D session with me. And it goes, boom. I and, I, and then all I did was yeah. say, I am a level five ranger. Yeah. You are in a forest. And that's. 
wow. it kicks off and then goblins and then i go wait i have food so it it throws the it, you know it was supposed to do hey the goblins attack yeah, yeah. let's do roll let's do that and i didn't even i don't have to roll dice because i, I know how to just role play and improv yeah yeah so i go oh, i say i have food and it's like oh what do you have and i said i have lots to share we don't like human food we like rats and snakes and i said <laughs> and it's like what do you offer it and, I, and then i just go and i know the D, the, the dm on the other side of this would have been like okay bro i just said ah oh, from the snake i caught this morning i offer him <laughs> i offer him some of the snake that i caught this morning and he's like oh, yes this will do what do you want the goblin <laughs> offers you information or something in exchange where's a nice ancient ruin with treasure and magic and he leads me there and we're off to the races it that's was that insane. easy that's writing fantasy game books of the 21st century it amazing and it's a it's a google yeah. login away bing have just integrated their own gtp into their search engine and you can get the whole different chat thing there's other people who are integrating stuff yeah. it's evolving incredibly fast too so mm. you just know be cautious google be careful it? yeah um bard. um bard which i love bard. Um, so sick oh, that's good yeah, it, it, yeah. you need an L in your name, my friend, or I can't pronounce it, makes a really good point that um, it's mm. a tool. If you create the tool ethically, yes. it can be yes. really useful. And that's the thing. I think it's the yeah. ethical use. Um, yeah. I mean, and I think yeah. we're at a point now where, where we can demand our tools are created ethically. Um, yeah, a thousand percent. As well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because yeah. even in the AI community that I've been a part of, so many discords and chats and various videos on YouTube, there's... <laughs> There's people who literally just go on and look at the popular stuff, mm -hmm. grab it, NFT it, mm -hmm. and they're profiting from it. Yeah. And they didn't even yeah. go to the effort yeah. of, of trying generating to their own yeah. image. Yeah. yeah. It's, or it, that's out, how volatile this <laughs> is. Taking out branding and logos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Images. And I've chatted. The, I don't know if anyone knows the yeah. story. There was this guy who submitted it to a local art competition and he won. And there was a massive outcry. I've, yeah. I've chatted to him on the Discord yeah. of Mid Journey. Mm -hmm. And I've seen people talking. It's. This is definitely it's just, a discussion. People are going to do talk. crazy things because they're yeah. not sure of the yeah. impact. So I tried not yeah. to do anything crazy. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I could create shirts on demand. I could have a different design every day, a limited edition. You, like my business mind was going, woo. Yeah. And then I just thought, <laughs> slow down because you know so many artists. I play with so many artists. Yeah. So yeah. I, I have asked their permission. Can I generate mm -hmm. art to use in game as, as assets? Yeah. And so I'll go, ooh, a magic item I generated and, and stuff. Yeah. And they're happy with that. I've asked their permission. And that's all it takes is a conversation. Yeah. And that's so, it. That's, that's yeah. communication. And yeah, yeah. it's um, and yeah, I think I think we should have this as a stream. Mm -hmm. Um and I think I'm really keen on having some kind of experimental AI DM game running us because mm -hmm. one, the scientist in me is fascinated. Yep. The forever DM in me wants to play yeah 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 uh, that's, that's I'd be exactly where i'm coming from yeah, yeah. Uh, just because we're getting close to the end of the uh session for today i just want to bring up one other way <laughs> unfortunately because we could talk more and add Good. to the conversation later if we can um we talked about conventions easy ways for people to get in being able to bring it forward to businesses through things like what you said jared that awesome game that live role playing <laughs> that you did with very simple rules um, online in particular and how valuable that is for so many people who feel more comfortable as well. And it is a different way of engaging a role-playing game. Um, yeah. All of these ways are. But that's the thing. I wanted to bring up some of the ways I've been engaging too because it can be daunting to go to a gaming store um, to meet people yeah. because it can feel like I don't know these people. They seem to know all each other and there's it's – quite it can be intimidating it could be Which intimidating going has wild. been around for such yeah. a long time yeah. even if there was like a dnd &D club at your your school or something you know i've yeah. heard stories where people are like oh you know it was there was guys who played it at my college or whatever you know you, yeah, yeah there's so many people who might be directly exposed or have an opportunity to um yeah yeah that's right i for started sure. playing many years ago through school because i met up with other people who happened to know about it and i went oh yeah that sounds interesting what it is and i know that these days there's more school groups that are doing this so i've been um some of the things i've been trying to engage with um through running games for schools 
I haven't had a chance to do that yet, but I've run it through libraries because mm -hmm. they wanted to engage more kids to come to the library, but engage with each other also socially and have it as a place they feel safe to go to because this is something mm -hmm. you know, they can talk about. That's been great because it's also been kids who didn't feel, a few of them said they didn't feel comfortable going to a gaming store. So mm -hmm. that's a big thing. Um, something I'm very proud of that's coming up very soon is to be engaged with Headspace, who uh, is an organisation around Australia that work with um, young young people, teens through to age 26, young adults, uh, with um, uh, emotional um, challenges um, and want to give them safe spaces to be able to engage. So mm. we've got a series that's going to be running very soon because um, they were so keen to have a role-playing game and say, can we play it? Can we do this as a group to build social engagement for their confidence, for their creativity and just to bond and get mm. – it's just – amazing so yeah. look out there for other places like that and there's you in your local libraries you know organizations groups who are engaging in small role-playing introductory sessions because it's a really mm -hmm. great way to get involved i've seen places advertising mm -hmm. that have got actually funding under ndis which if you're not in australia is our national disability insurance scheme for mm -hmm. um to build social skills through role-playing games um, and I think that's so valuable. Like, it's it's a bit of a level up. It can also be a great divider. I mean, I think everybody's encountered groups that were unhealthy in their their environment, but mm. it can be such a great way for people with you know all over the neurodiversity spectrum, all over the physical ability and disability spectrum, to engage mm. as equals because it's role play. We've all got brains. <laughs> you know, mm. we can all we all have an imagination, and that's what I love mm. about it. Um, Sounds like I'm trying to sell it to people. Are you guys sold? We are. Well, that's what we're doing. Yeah, it's working for me. So I'm, pre I'm pretty sure I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure. But I think because we're getting we are getting towards the end here. So uh, mm. things that are coming up for us. What's anything new? I just mentioned one thing I've got coming up for us. How about for the two of you? I just my stream, which I may have accidentally already cross promoted in chat. Um, no, that was me. <laughs> ah, yes, thank, thank you for the shout out. We need to set up shout outs. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I've left yeah, all the just, tabs open. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> and uh, we will be uh, launching our YouTube channel soon. Yep. yep it yep, will yep, have yep. Um, on that channel will be videos. Uh, it will be this, but kind of edited a bit to get rid of the parents where I've ummed and ahed or you know looked the wrong <laughs> way. No, no, we're gonna have it. It'll be more curated type stuff. Um, and if you're seeing this on YouTube, hi, hey, hi. Please oh, um, leave comments down below of stuff that you would like to see us do or talk about. It is what we are here for. Uh, that's um, that's all I can think of apart from our kind mm -hmm. of the collector comment we've talked about. Yeah, yeah. which we'll put down a link to yeah. so you can uh, what we'll do. Area. What, what, yeah. what we'll probably do is like have the ad banner down the bottom that I've been trying to make. And once I have the ad banner, it'll have... Um, all of our wonderful associates, collaborative partners, and potentially sponsors, and obviously Collecticon will just get put down there. There will always be links in the description, doobly do in the chat. We're gonna organize commands and stuff, mm -hmm. so you can always check out when the latest Collecticon is. Because because we're all involved, I organize sponsorships and and the DMs in the running of the day. And we have beautiful DMs like Ian and Thea who uh, help run games. We're going to be talking about it here and there. It's just part of our lives. So apologies if it seems like we are intensely Delicate. promoting it, but it is just, <laughs> it is, and it is the one of the key avenues where we play this game. So, yeah. <laughs> and where we give back That's to this awesome. incredible community. Yeah. You people. Yeah. All of you. We'll continue yeah. this. So please share your own uh, things that you're doing so we can um, get involved and keep the conversation going. What we've got coming up next week, uh, we have. We had a bit of a chat to see on that note before I say it as well. Thank you so much for the commentary here because we want to be able to talk about this. Ethics in gaming is a big thing. That's a really mm. good thing. Mm. Um, we talked about session zero, I think, is going to be one that's going to come up that we'll talk about soon. Um, but among other things, next week, we're going to be talking about safe gaming tools. Um, what are things mm -hmm. that you use to help um, GMs and players uh, feel welcome, safe, and confident to engage uh, at a table? So have a look forward to that next week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big topic, uh, but um, big topic, big topic. something I'm passionate about massively. 
Massively. Yeah, I mean, you've done a lot to help with. Um, mm. And you guys know I love talking about the, the various diversity and making diverse groups feel safe. So I think that's a really key and important thing. Um, yes. You guys can chat. Please join our Discord if you haven't already. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, please. Um, yeah. We've obviously got a plan for next week. This time. <laughs> no. We're, we're going to have regularly I mean, yeah. planned stuff and things that we really need, need not just want, but need to talk about. But we absolutely want to hear from you guys. We want to chat to you. We wanted to have discussions, not just here live, but on YouTube, on Discord. That's where you guys can reach us. Uh, link to the Discord is coming right this. I'm not going to click on right, anything Purdy. Discord because I might ruin the stream. So um, if That's we can right. get a, a link to Purdy there. Um, hang out, comment please we want to hear the voice of the community and be able to filter that through various experiences various approaches and various meth methods like we've been talking about all evening so thank you so much for tuning in mm. i've been the gm chef ian has been roleplay experience and thea is the omgm uh you can check out her place of live stream games ian always share some really interesting articles that i enjoy reading and i need to do more content so i'll see you Wherever we, wherever we see you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you. Everybody. Thanks for joining us. Love Good to see you guys. Energy. And see you.